So welcome again in the name of Jesus Christ. And now we start our worship service today. Bienvenidos nuevamente en el nombre de Jesucristo. Y ahora comenzamos nuestro servicio de adoración. Please, now let's join in our call to worship. This is the place and this is the time. Este es el lugar y este es el momento. Aquí y ahora, Aquí y ahora Dios espera para entrar en nuestra experiencia. To change our minds para cambiar de opinión. To change, change our lives. Para cambiar nuestras vidas. To change our ways. Para cambiar nuestros caminos. To make, to make, us, make us see the world, world and the whole, and the whole of, of life in a new light. light. Para, para, para hacernos ver, ver el mundo, mundo en toda la vida, la vida en nueva luz. luz. To fill us with hope joy, and certainty for the future. Pariaramos de esperanza, alegría, y certeza para el futuro. This is the place as all places. This is the time, as are all times, Este es el momento, como todos los tiempos. Here, here and now, now, let us pray now. now. Aquí, Aquí y ahora, hablemos a Dios. And now a prayer for gratitude for God's presence. Let us pray, O oh Lord, in the midst of crisis, at a time of ever-present dangers to our health and well-being, renew our faith and strengthen our resolve to forge ahead along a path not of temptations, excuses, regrets, but rather the way that Jesus taught, where fear is no match for joy, where judgment gives way to forgiveness, and arrogance cannot hold a candle to humility, and where being of service to others is at the root of who we are and what we aspire to become as disciples of Christ in every sense of the word, and a source of constant comfort hope and love for friend and stranger alike. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning again. So welcome to Children's Moment. It's a lot of great creation story, right? Today, Today, uh, I'd like to share the precious lesson in this creation story written in the Genesis. So God created all things in this world, and God saw all creation and said that it was good. So because all creatures were beautiful, and they are harmonious, they, their harmony was so beautiful, everything Everything is in harmony with each other in the story of God creation. That is very important. So when God created all things in the universe, God also created the beauty of harmony. The fact, the fact that all things are created by God means that all things are touched by God's hand and all things are related to God. Therefore, nothing is not precious in the universe. As children of God, 
we have a responsibility to cherish all things in this world and to keep this harmonious because that is God's will and God's plan. Therefore, it is God's order to protect our nature and all things around us and to protect his planet. That is the mission given to us by God. All right, amen? Okay, let us pray. Dear loving God, everything is created by God. So everything is precious. As a disciple of Jesus Christ and children of God, help us to cherish, love all the things around us and protect our earth. Thank you, God. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. We warmly welcome Reverend Dr. Gilberto Colasso. Our scripture lesson this morning uh, begins with Psalm 137. Alongside Babylon's streams, there we sat down, crying because we remembered Zion. We hung our lyres up in the trees there because that's where our captors asked us to sing. Our tormentors requested songs of joy. Sing us a song about Zion, they said. But how could we possibly sing the Lord's song on foreign soil? Jerusalem, if I forget you, let my strong hand wither. Let my tongue stick to the roof of my mouth if I don't remember you. If I don't make Jerusalem my greatest joy. Also, we have Luke chapter three, verses four through six. This is just as it was written in the scroll of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley will be filled and every mountain and hill will be leveled. The crooked will be made straight and the rough places made smooth. All humanity will see God's salvation. May God bless the reading and understanding of this lesson. Se me ha dado el privilegio de poder leer Salmo 137 Junto a los ríos de Babilonia nos sentábamos y llorábamos al acordarnos de Sion. En los álamos que habían en la ciudad colgábamos nuestras arpas. Allí los que nos tenían cautivos nos pedían que cantáramos canciones. <risa> Nuestros opresores nos pedían estar alegres. Nos decían, cántenos un cántico de Sion. ¿Cómo cantar las canciones del Señor en una tierra extraña? Ah, Jerusalén, Jerusalén. <risa> Si llegara yo a olvidarte, que la mano derecha se me seque. Si de ti no me acordara, ni te pusiera por encima de mi propia alegría, que la lengua se me pegue al paladar. El de Lucas dice, así está escrito en el profeta Isaías. Vos que grites en el desierto, preparen el camino del Señor. Hagan de sendas derechas. Todo valle será rellenado, toda montaña será allanada. Los caminos torcidos se enderezan, las sendas escabrosas quedarán y todo mortal verá la acción de Dios. Que Dios añada bendición a su palabra en esta tarde. So greetings, my brothers and my sisters, and I certainly appreciate that, um, that introduction. Um, it's always an awkward moment when you hear somebody talking about you and you're kind of cringing, wondering what they're, what they're going to say. But um, I do want to share two things. Um, yes, since 2001, uh, I have been part of the New Church um, effort, uh, part of the 2020 vision, 
that um, has brought about the uh, planting of at least a thousand churches by the year 2020. And I want Downey to celebrate um, with the rest of the church that not only did we reach that goal of a thousand churches, but we were able to sur surpass it by several dozen more churches. And of course, um, that work still continues. So thanks be to God. Uh, and the second thing I want to say is that um, it's, a, it's a real privilege for me to be able to be with, uh, with Downey this afternoon because we share a special link. Um, when we were back here in uh, Indianapolis 15 years ago, uh, we planted a church along with my wife and another couple. Um, that church is Casa del Alfaredo, which is a church that I now attend as a member. And one of our Timothys was uh, Daphne Arias Gastor. Um, I don't know if that name rings a bell. Da I'm sorry, D D Daphne Gastor Arias. Her mom was also our pastor. Um, so um, your former pastor is actually a Timothy and a product of um, Casa del Alfaredo. So that's something I can celebrate this afternoon. Darle a gracias al Señor por este privilegio de estar con ustedes. Decía en inglés que eh, dos cositas que ya quería compartir. Primero que en el 2001 cuando salimos de Indianápolis para hacia Indianápolis eh, con la, la encomienda de plantar al menos mil iglesias para el 2020, eh, Dios fue fiel, Dios es fiel y logramos esa meta y hemos rebasado las mil iglesias que han sido plantadas desde el 2001 y sabemos que todavía está ese llamado sobre nosotros como iglesia, así que bendecimos al Señor. Y lo otro que les comentaba era que eh, hay, un, hay un vínculo muy hermoso entre su iglesia y la nuestra, eh, y, y mi persona. En el, el 2004, junto a mi esposa y otra pareja, fundamos eh, la iglesia Casa de Alfarero, la iglesia a la cual yo asisto ahora mismo. De esa iglesia salió eh, quien fue su pastora hasta hace poco, eh, la reverenda eh, Mafe Gascón. Así que es una bendición esta tarde para poder compartir esos elementos que son tan, tan cercanos y especiales para mí. Así que Dios bendiga. So I want to I wanna start um, uh, just a brief uh, sharing with you all today and referring back to uh, the idea that the biblical narratives are full of stories, stories of journeys, stories of pilgrimages, of, of exiles and, and displacements. The first documented journey is that of the first couple of out of Eden upon the When we look through Genesis, see Abraham's trip, leaving behind comfort and, and riches and land, um, that which was known uh, to a promised yet unknown land. When we think about that hurried exit, exit of Lot from, from Sodom, or the stories of flights in the middle of the night, um, as David sought to escape the wrath of King Saul. And of course, the many stories of the of the people of Israel, like what we kind of saw in that 136 we read. How can we forget the journey of the sons of Isaac into Egypt when famine hit their homeland? And the displacement of the entire nation as the Israelites moved into Egypt because of that famine, only to end up enslaved barely a few generations after that journey. And of course, probably one of the most well-known stories in scripture is that 40-year journey of uh, Israel as they sought to claim a new homeland. Sabe, la palabra está, está llena de relatos acerca de viajes, jornadas, exilios y también desplazamientos. La primera que se documenta es la salida precipitada de esa primera pareja de Edén luego de su desobediencia. El Génesis nos habla de la fe de Abraham, quien dejó tierra, parentelas, riquezas, todo lo conocido, para ir en busca de una tierra prometida, pero aún así desconocida para él. ¿Y qué del viaje apresurado de salida de Lot de la ciudad de Sodoma? Los constantes viajes de huida de de David tratando de escapar la furia, la ira del rey Saúl. La palabra nos habla también de los muchos, muchos exilios y destierros del pueblo de Israel. Pero cómo también olvidar el viaje de los hermanos de José cuando la hambruna azotó Canaán y llegaron hasta donde estaba él. Y luego, como todo el pueblo de Israel sale de la tierra para ir a Egipto, para luego terminar esclavizado. Y claro, entonces ese famoso viaje ¿no? de Israel saliendo de Egipto para estar 40 años en el desierto, camino a esa tierra prometida. 
Amado, es que tal parece que una parte significativa de la realidad humana es que somos todos viajeros constantes. Algunos de esos viajes tristes son el resultado de guerras, hambrunas, persecuciones, desastres naturales. Y otros son motivados por deseos de seguridad y de bienestar personal y económico. Jornadas en busca de un bienestar general para nosotros y para los nuestros. Pero la realidad es que somos una humanidad en continuo movimiento. No solo en el ambiente espiritual, sino también en el ambiente físico y emocional. Sí, it seems that a expression, reality of human existence is that we are constant sojourners. We know that some of the journeys of, of humankind are the results of famines, of, of wars, of persecutions, natural disasters. Others are motivated by a desire for personal safety and well-being as well as economic stability. But whatever, whatever the, the motivation, we are as humanity a people in constant movement. And not just in the, in the physical aspect, but also in the emotional and spiritual realm as well. The New Testament affirms that, that idea of constant movement for us as believers in light of the ministry of Jesus. When we think about it, Jesus was constantly moving along the highways and the byways, meeting people where they were, engaging people in their context, meeting their needs in their moments, even leaving us with that great commission which in essence is an order to move. It, when we look at the scripture of Matthew 28, which basically says, go and do. So it should come as no surprise um, that the, after the Pentecost experience, those first believers were known as those of the way. Y cuando pensamos en esa jornada, el Nuevo Testamento vuelve, amado, a afirmar esta realidad para nosotros como creyentes cuando vemos cómo el ministerio de Jesús fue uno de constante movimiento. Yo recuerdo en mi niñez en la iglesia un cántico que decía, Jesucristo predicaba por los campos y las aldeas y hablaba como continuamente Jesús en donde estaba. Suplía las necesidades en el momento. Establecía relación con ellos. Y sin embargo, ya al final vemos en la gran comisión de Mateo 28, 19, que es básicamente una orden al movimiento. Vayan y hagan. Finalmente, no debe extrañarnos que los primeros, los primeros cristianos, luego de del Pentecostés, se le conoció como los de... ¿Y qué nos dice esto hoy, amada iglesia? Ya estamos viviendo. ¿Sabe? Una peculiaridad de muchos de, de estos viajeros, tanto de los relatos bíblicos como de las narrativas de destierro y desplazamiento de hoy, es que muchos, si no todos, de alguna manera albergaban y albergan la esperanza de volver al lugar de donde salieron. El anhelo de retomar las cosas tal como las dejaron y resumir la vida tal como las llevaban. Los israelitas en el destierro expresaban su añoranza por ver a la tierra de donde habían sido arrebatados. Sin importar la destierro, era una esperanza de ver a lo que habían dejado. Por eso les estaba paradójico cuando aquellos que lo habían sacado de su tierra por fuerza y violencia, era que se profunda tristeza en el corazón del pueblo porque habían sido forzados a salir y a dejar muchas cosas atrás. ¿Cómo cantaremos en tierra de extraños? ¿Cómo nos gozaremos en esta situación cuando desearíamos tanto estar en nuestra casa? Sí, a peculiarity of many sojourners, not just those in the biblical narratives, as well as those who have been displaced and exiled today, is that Many, if not all, in some way yearned, yearned back then and continue to yearn today to be able to return to the place they left behind, to be able to go back to how things were, 
resume life just as they had been living it before they were so abruptly displaced. And, and that's, that's basically the spirit behind that Psalm 137, when the Israelites are asked to sing um, in the midst of, of being exiled, in the midst of that deep sadness at having to have left behind family, property, land, how paradoxical when the people couldn't understand their plight, expect on life as if nothing had happened. And they talk about, you know, may my tongue stick to the roof of my mouth. I would even sing about joy in those songs of my land um, when I am here feeling like I have lost it all. Habrán escuchado, yo soy de Puerto Rico, ¿no? Y para los puertorriqueños que estamos fuera de esta tierra, que tanto amamos, una experiencia casi obligada cuando nos encontramos con otros puertorriqueños en alguna actividad, es que en algún momento de la noche terminamos cantando una canción que se titula El mi viejo San Juan. No sé si lo han escuchado, pero es una canción que expresa un deseo a, a un nivel bien, bien primario de volver al lugar de donde salimos. Un anhelo de retomar cosas como las dejamos, como estaban las cosas antes de salir. Esa jornada que nos llevó fuera de nuestra amada tierra, albergamos la esperanza de que fuera temporero y que algún día pudiéramos volver. Me imagino que muchos de ustedes que provienen de otros países tendrán también para su tierra. Quizás muchos las cantan y les nace un deseo profundo de volver al lugar de donde salieron. No, pero lo cierto del caso es que cada uno de nosotros de alguna manera alberga esa esperanza de volver al lugar de donde salimos. Pero, amados, hay una realidad. Por más que lo deseemos, nunca podremos volver al mismo lugar de donde salimos. Hay un dicho nativo americano que dice Nunca podemos entrar al mismo río dos veces. Piénselo. Porque su constante fluir trae una nueva realidad. Cada momento. De modo que usted entra al río, sale. A los cinco minutos entra y está entrando a una nueva realidad. Aquella realidad ya pasó. No va a poder jamás capturarla de la misma manera en que estaba. Pero la palabra es clara. La iglesia, hay lugares de donde nosotros hemos salido a donde no debemos volver. Hay lugares de donde Dios nos ha permitido salir y nos sacó porque no nos convenía estar en ese lugar. Piensen cuando Israel en el desierto, cuando las cosas se ponían difíciles, cuando las cosas no iban como ellos las querían, cuando las cosas no les resultaban familiares, enseguida anhelaban diciendo, ojalá pudiéramos volver a Egipto, al Egipto de nuestra esclavitud, al Egipto de nuestra falta de esperanza, al Egipto de nuestra falta de vida. Mire, amado, hay lugares que hemos dejado atrás porque permanecer en ellos sería para muerte. Como la experiencia de la esposa de Lot, que miraba hacia atrás, anhelando aquello que quedaba atrás. Sabemos que fue... Si Dios ha creado el momento para sacarnos de Estado, era porque no nos venía. For those of us living outside of land or a country that we call, uh, for many there is a sense of yearning. As a Puerto Rican, when I am amongst others from Puerto Rico, no matter where we're at, it almost seems that at some given moment, we end up singing this song, which is very well known, Um, it's called In My Old San Juan, San Juan being the capital. And it's, it's a song that talks about going back home eventually. It's about taking up the place that I left, which I had to leave when I was forced to leave the country. And I imagine that many others living in, in this country, um, who originally came from other countries, might have some of those songs. Songs that remind them of what they have left behind. And we yearn for going back. We yearn for, for being to, to that place, to how things were. But you know, the truth is, we can never return to the same place that we have left behind. 
there's a balance. You can never enter the same river twice. You can never enter the same river twice. Because there's this constant flow that brings about a new reality. There's this constant movement that forges new realities, new paths. No matter how many times you go into the river, every time you go in, it's a different place. But you know, truth be told, there are places that we have left that we should never yearn to go back to. When things got tough for the Israelites in the desert, when, when things didn't seem familiar, when things didn't work the way they wanted, when they couldn't have their ways, the first thing they would go to that bad place, the first, the first one, we should go back to Egypt. We should go back to Egypt. What were they saying? We, we should go back to that place uh, where there was no hope. We should go back to that place of slavery. We should go back to that place of darkness. We should go back to that place of death. You know, there are places that we have left. We have places that God has allowed us to leave because to remain there would have been places of death. To stay would have been a death sentence. I'm reminded when, again, in the scripture, when we see Lot's wife who, who, who struggled with leaving behind what, was, what they were leaving behind and, and, and the result of that. There are situations where, where, that are not life-giving. There are situations that are not the best places for us to be. But it doesn't mean that there are no new ways that are being formed. Esta situación con la pandemia, iglesia, nos ha lanzado a una jornada de destierros y de encierros. Algunos trabajando o estudiando desde sus casas. Algunos quizás no hablando por distintas razones, pero como dice mi país, todo lo que pare. Todo el mundo aburrido, todo el mundo. ¿Cuándo podemos volver a, a la normalidad? Pero como iglesia también tenemos que reconocer que esta pandemia nos ha lanzado a una jornada de pensar y de repensar cómo entendiblemente muchos, si no todos, ¿verdad? Anhelamos volver a, a nuestros templos, a, eso, a los edificios, a reunirnos, a estar en la presencia de cada uno de los demás, porque anhelamos esa cercanía, poder estar los hermanos para, para compartir el beso, el el abrazo, poder tener los cánticos que, que tan familiar nos resultan, ¿verdad? Esos cánticos de Sion, como decía el Salmo 137. Volver al lugar que dejamos atrás cuando esta pandemia nos lanzó a un viaje inesperado. Pero iglesia, ¿y qué si la voluntad de Dios es que esta jornada nos lleve a un lugar completamente distinto al que dejamos atrás? Si hemos de aplicar el principio bíblico a esta jornada, tenemos que reconocer que Dios no nos ha traído hasta aquí para volver atrás. Isaías 43, 19 dice, voy a hacer algo nuevo. Ya está. No se dan cuenta. Estoy abriendo un camino en el desierto y ríos en lugares de la iglesia, aunque todavía quizás no lo podamos ver, aunque todavía quizás no lo podamos entender, los caminos que Dios está forjando para ustedes como iglesia, promete que hay cosas nuevas que han de surgir, promete que hay visiones nuevas que han de surgir, promete que el camino que Dios está trazando para nosotros es como ese camino en el cual leíamos en Lucas, preparar camino al Señor, camino nuevo, camino diferente, para que la gente vea y a quien nosotros hemos y servimos y quien traza senda para nosotros. So, of leaving behind some places and being quarantined into others. Some are working, others not working from but probably all of us somehow climbing walk because of the uncertainty of what lies ahead. I imagine we all have our pandemic stories, right? Life before the pandemic and life during the pandemic. 
And what lies ahead, that unknown can be very scary. That is why for so many, what was left behind seems so much a better alternative than to be willing to wait in this time of uncertainty. But one thing I do know from my conversations with churches that we serve, from conversations even within my own church, is that this pandemic has forced many, if not all, to think and rethink, to imagine and reimagine how we are and how we do church. Understandably, there is a desire amongst all to go back to how it was before, meeting in the buildings, being at the sisters in Christ, the kisses, the fist bumps, singing together the songs of Zion, so much joy. Yearning to go back to those places we left behind when this pandemic forced us, forced another journey on us. The church today, I, I, I'd like to pose the question, what if in the midst of this, it is God's will that this journey take us into a new place, unlike the one that we left behind? If we're to apply the biblical uh, principles to this journey, we must be willing to embrace those new ways. Isaiah 43 says, look, I am doing a new thing. Now it sprouts up. Don't you recognize it? I am making a new way in the desert, paths in the wilderness. It is happening. Maybe we don't see it. Maybe we don't understand it. Maybe we don't fully comprehend it. But way forward, our journeys are taking us to new places, to different places. Esta jornada, iglesia, la oportunidad de dejar hacia nuevas experiencias, hacia nuevas experiencias nuestras experiencias de fe, tanto en el nivel personal y humanitario. ¿Cuántas cosas en los últimos meses que nos han permitido ser y hacer iglesia de una manera que jamás habíamos pensado? ¿Cuántas experiencias espirituales nuevas y profundas hemos vivido en nuestra soledad y en el encierro de nuestros hogares que nos han dado una nueva perspectiva en nuestro caminar cristiano? ¿Qué nuevas modalidades en la práctica de nuestras disciplinas espirituales hemos descubierto o hemos desarrollado? Amado, ¿a cuántas personas hemos encontrado y conocido en nuestros caminos cibernéticos que tal vez de otra manera nunca hubiéramos conocido? ¿Y qué estamos haciendo al respecto? ¿Y qué vamos a hacer al respecto? ¿Y para qué? Porque sabemos que volver a los caminos Volver a los lugares donde estábamos antes. Volver a hacer las cosas como si antes. Es solo perpetuar lo que ya teníamos. Obviar más. Y las nuevas prácticas que hemos descubierto y desarrollado. Y no buscar hacer nuevas todas las cosas. Sería una manera de vida. This new journey offers us the opportunity to seek and focus on the new experiences, to discover new horizons in how to think, both in the individual as well as the communal experience. How many new and noble experiences have we lived in the past months that have allowed us to be and to do church in a new way? How many new and profound spiritual experiences have we lived in the solitude of our homes that have given us new perspectives in our walk with Christ? What new models of, of practicing spiritual disciplines have emerged or have we discovered in this six month plus journey? How many people have we encountered on those cyber highways that have worshiped with us that probably would not have happened any other way? And, and what are we planning on doing with this? What are we planning on doing with the people that we have met on these new highways and byways? Why do I ask that? Because we know that if we just choose to wait to go back to how it was that we were doing it before, it will just perpetuate that which we had, but will not be effective for this new reality this journey is taking us into. See, to not open ourselves to the new things that God is doing and showing would be to have wasted the last six months of this life journey, both individually and as a church. De una cosa si estoy seguro. Esta jornada nos ha retado a reclamar ese tipo de Dios, los primeros cristianos del camino. Iglesia, hay que estar dispuesto a enfrentar 
listo a vivir una experiencia de iglesia y de discipulado de presencia en nuestra comunidad. No permitamos que nuestros edificios se vuelvan a convertir en los paradigmas que confíen en nosotros. Por ahí se dice mucho, la iglesia ha dejado el edificio. Mire, que ese sea nuestro lema, que eso sea nuestro lema, que los edificios no se conviertan en el testimonio o en el ministerio de la iglesia, sino que los edificios sean realmente conductos para ministerios transformadores en las comunidades. ¿Qué nos depara el futuro? Iglesia, eso solo sabe el Dios de nuestros cronos y nuestros kairos. Pero ese es el Dios que nos espera en el futuro, que nos está velado a nosotros, pero completamente revelado en Dios. Estas son las preguntas que ustedes como iglesia tendrán que lidiar. En un tiempo de transición como el que estamos viviendo todos nosotros, este es el momento para pensar creativamente, para preguntarnos de qué nos tenemos que despojar ¿Qué tenemos que dejar a la orilla del camino para que nuestra jornada sea? ¿Sabe? Para crecer, primero hay que podar. En la alimentación, para ganar, hay que a perder. Yo no sé qué va a significar esto para ustedes como iglesia. O a dónde nos pueda llevar una promesa gloriosa para cada uno de nosotros que la gloria será mayor. So church, I encourage, let us embrace this journey, willing to live out new experiences of discipleship and life in community. Let's not allow our buildings to define us as probably they have in the past. They become parameters, they become places that confine transformational ministry. Let us understand that, that that affirmation that has been out there for a while that says, The church has left the building. I hope that that is a great truth that is guiding our new journeys. May that be our new life affirmation. What is it that God is showing as we walk in this path of faith? Walking not by sight, but by What does the future hold for us, church? What does the future hold for you? God knows. I don't have an answer for that question. However, I do know that in our chronos, in our time, and in God's kairos, there awaits for us a glorious future that in its perfect time will be fully revealed. So as we journey and ponder in this time of transition, church, I think we need to ask ourselves, what do we need to leave behind on our journey? What do we need to cast off on the wayside so that this journey can be more productive? You know, there's a key rule for gardening. For growth, you first have to prune. Think about that. Maybe, maybe pruning is an order as part of this journey. In the spiritual economics, to gain, you have to be willing to lose. Not sure what that could be for you as a church, but of one thing I am certain, there's a strong promise in scripture in Haggai that the glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house. Our journey is a journey that's being prepared for us so that as we are willing to embrace the new experiences, as we're willing to embrace the new ways of doing things, we will see God in ways, we will experience God in ways, we will have experiences in ways that we never thought would be possible. Esto es una jornada de fe, iglesia. Es un caminar. Quizás sabiendo cuáles son las preguntas, pero no claro en cuáles son las respuestas. Pero hay un poeta español, Antonio Machado, que parece que tenía algo de teólogo. Pues habla de que nuestra jornada se hace al caminar. Oiga lo que dice. Caminante son tus huellas, el camino y nada más. Caminante no hay, se hace camino al Al andar, te Hace el camino. Y al volver la vista atrás, se ve la senda que nunca se ha de volver a pisar. Caminar sino estelas en la... The Spanish poet Antonio Machado spoke of the challenge of forging new paths. A task we are called to today as church in time of pandemics. The poem reads, Wayfarer, there is no path. Wayfair, the only way is your footprints and no other. 
Wayfair, there is no way, no way by going farther, by going farther, make your way. To looking back at where you wandered, you look at the path you made, not set foot on from now onward. There's no way, only way on the water. Caminemos confiados que el Dios que nos ha acompañado esta jornada va con nosotros por el poderoso gigante, creciendo la oportunidad y nuevas experiencias que nos han de llevar a nuevas victorias, a caminar y forjar nuevas sendas, a caminar por fe, confiado de que quien Él es quien va por delante. Lo que se dejó atrás cumplió su propósito, hagamos camino al andar, entendiendo que aquel que comenzó la buena obra en nosotros la perfeccionará hasta el día de Jesucristo. So church, let us journey with the confidence of knowing that the God who has walked alongside us, alongside you, alongside your church, in this time of pandemic, still stands alongside us, offering us new ways, forging new paths, offering new experiences that shall grant greatness. Walk, sojourn, walk by faith and not by sight. What has been left behind has fulfilled its purpose, and be encouraged in knowing that the one who started a good work in you will stay with you to complete it. Amen. Invitación a la comunión. Even as Christ called his disciples one by one, by name, so the risen Christ calls each of you one by one, by name, to come and share about this table in a community of love. Join him, not because you are good, but because Christ wants you. Eat and drink with Christ within the universal fellowship of those who are loved without reservation, just as they are. Así como Jesús llamó a sus discípulos, uno por uno, por su nombre, Así Cristo resucitado llama a cada uno de ustedes, uno por uno, por su nombre, para que vengan y compartan esta mesa en una comunidad de amor. Únete a Él, no porque seas bueno, sino porque Cristo te quiere. Come y bebe con Cristo en la comunión universal de aquellos que son amados sin reservas, tal como son. During, as it says in Mark 14, 22 to 25, during the Passover meal, Jesus took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to everyone present and said, take, this represents my body. He took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, this represents my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Do this in remembrance of me. Como dice Marcos 14, 22 al 25. Durante la comida de la Pascua, Jesús tomó el pan, lo bendijo, lo partió y lo dio a todos los presentes. Y dijo, tomen esto, esto representa mi cuerpo. Tomó también la copa, dio gracias y se las dio, y todos bebieron de ella. Les dijo, esto representa mi sangre del pacto, que es derramada por muchos. Hagan esto en memoria de mí. Let us take the bread of life and the cup of love. Tomemos el pan de vida y la copa de amor. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for renewing our faith, strengthening our hope, kindling our love through the power of the living Christ at work in us. Grant that we shall walk in newness of life. Amen. Te damos gracias, Dios, por renovar nuestra fe, fortalecer nuestra esperanza, 
encender nuestro amor por el poder del Cristo viviente, obrando en nosotros, concede que caminemos en novedad de vida. Amén. Stewardship is not fundraising. It is a spiritual discipline. It is about responding with our whole being to the generosity of God. It starts with God rather than ourselves. The process of becoming a faithful steward is the realization that we are responding to what God has done rather than seeking to generate a reaction from God. God has already blessed, already provided. Genuine stewardship, therefore, finds the heart of its beginning in the wow of God. God, according to Genesis, looks upon the unfolding work of creation and says at the end of each day, wow, this is good. All of it brings delight to the heart of the divine one. Such awe is the right way for us to start our stewardship conversation so that we can indeed end well. Thank you for your donations for the ministry at Downey Memorial Christian Church. We will now receive the offering. La mayordomía no es una recaudación de fondos. Es una disciplina espiritual. Se trata de responder con todo nuestro ser a la generosidad de Dios. Comienza con Dios en lugar de nosotros mismos. El proceso de convertirse en un mayordomo fiel es darnos cuenta de que estamos respondiendo a lo que Dios ha hecho, en lugar de buscar generar una reacción de Dios. Dios ya ha bendecido, ya ha provisto. Por tanto, la mayordomía genuina encuentra el corazón de su comienzo en el guau wow de Dios. Dios, según el Génesis, mira el desarrollo de la obra de la creación y dice al final de cada día, ¡Guau! Wow, esto es bueno. Todo ello deleita el corazón del divino. Tal asombro es el camino correcto para que comencemos nuestra conversación sobre la mayordomía para que podamos terminar bien. Gracias por sus donaciones para el ministerio en Downey Memorial Christian Church. Ahora recibiremos la ofrenda. There are several ways you can give to the church through your offering and help make a difference. Hay varias formas en que puede dar a la iglesia a través de su ofrenda y ayudar para hacer la diferencia. You can mail a check to Downey Memorial Christian Church at 8441 East Florence Avenue, Downey, 90240. You can also go to the church and drop it in the mail slot on the right side of the glass doors at the main entrance to the church. Envíe un cheque a Downey Memorial Christian Church al 8441 este de la Florence Avenue, Downey. También puede ir a la iglesia y colocarla en la ranura del correo en el lado derecho de las puertas de vidrio en la entrada principal de la iglesia. Visit the DMCC website at downingmemorial.org. Scroll down on the home page and click on the green Give button. Visit the sitio web de DMCC en downingmemorial.org. Mueva la, palabra, la página de inicio hacia abajo y haga clic en el botón verde que dice Give. Or you can go to the Givelify app. Tap, give, done. Thank you for your contributions to our church. También puede ir a la aplicación Givelify. Toque, dar y listo. Gracias por sus contribuciones a nuestra iglesia. Let us pray. Most giving and forgiving God provide for our every need. We thank you for good beginnings, fresh starts, and the first step in a new journey of discovery. 
Amén. Dios generoso y perdonador, tú provees para todas nuestras necesidades. Te agradecemos sus buenos comienzos, nuevos comienzos y primer paso en un nuevo viaje de descubrimiento. Amén. Anuncios. Adoración en español con el pastor David Becerra. Facebook Live, Darby Memorial Christian Church, los viernes a las 7 p.m. Todos están bienvenidos. All are welcome. On September 27 and October 12th, we will receive the special offering for Reconciliation Ministry in congregations. El 27 de septiembre y el 4 de octubre recibiremos la ofrenda especial para el Ministerio de Reconciliación en las congregaciones. As a congregation of the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, we encourage donations to the special offerings of the General Church, Reconciliation Ministry. We pray that your generosity is a special offering over and above your support for your church. Como congregación Como de la iglesia cristiana, discípulo de Cristo, alentamos a las donaciones, a las ofrendas especiales de la Iglesia General, Ministerio de Reconciliación. Oramos para que su universidad sea una ofrenda especial más allá de su apoyo a su iglesia. Here is a video about this special offering. Aquí hay una, un video sobre esta oferta, ofrenda especial. In Luke 19, 39 to 40, we read that some of the Pharisees in a crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Though we know that God's spirit will cause the stones to cry out if we remain silent, when it comes to being an anti-racist, pro-reconciling church, silence is not an option. So may our voices echo across the stones and across this land as we work toward the restoration of God's beloved community. Estar presente es más que una foto en una protesta o un mensaje en tus redes sociales. Estar presente significa llorar conmigo y dejar que el dolor de las lágrimas de mi gente se muevan a luchar juntos con quienes hemos sido empujados a la orilla. Tan solo por el color de nuestra piel, la marca de nuestros acentos o los documentos que tenemos. I tell you, if you were to keep silent, the stones would cry out. Silence is the absence of sound. To speak is to convey a feeling or an opinion. This is not the time to be the absence of sound, but to convey the injustice of those feeling the weight of racism and oppression. This is the time to speak up and convey the truth of God's love and equality for us all. I choose to stand up for people of color because racism seems unbeatable. But if God can make the rocks cry out, then just imagine what he can do with people who he already created with the ability to love one another. Church, the whole earth is yearning for the revealing of the children of God. Christ has given us the ministry of reconciliation so that in our human failing to see the image of God in every child, young and old, dark and light, from across the corners of the earth, that we might allow Christ to rise up in us, to strengthen us, to show up, to speak up, and to stand up on behalf of our siblings. Your giving to Reconciliation Ministry strengthens our congregations and our communities to ensure the human dignity of every child, that every child might have access to Christ's abundance, access to flourishing in education and financial stability and in relationships across the human diversity. Won't you join the chorus in shouting out, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed are the ones, blessed are we who come 
in the name of the Lord. May it be so, and thank you for your generosity. Our next announcement, remember to fill out your 2020 census form if you've not already done so. Recuerda de llenar la forma del censo 2020. There will be a congregational meeting Sunday, October 11th to vote on the amended bylaws. Copies of the bylaws will be sent out this week. Reunión de la congregación el 11 de octubre para votar sobre los estatutos enmendados. Enviaremos copias de los estatutos esta semana. Next Sunday, Pastor David will be preaching. El próximo domingo, Pastor David estará predicando. For the opportunity to have been um, in your space together with you all and uh, for the blessing of being able to share the word and to be fed by um, this time of, of fellowship and, and worship. In a couple of minutes, another church, um, uh, this one though is a training that I, I am leading a couple of minutes. So unfortunately I will not be able to join you in your fellowship time afterwards, but I certainly have been blessed and fed um, through this communion together. So let us pray. God of our journeys, you are our way maker. You have promised to be with us every day of our life. As we are set forth from this place, we have sought to be obedient and first take some time to be still and to acknowledge that you are our God. Now as we resume our journey, may it be one of new discoveries and new experiences. We are reminded that the prophet Jeremiah challenges us to call upon you because you will answer and you will show us unsearchable things that we not, not know. So, oh God, in our journey, we call upon you. Let us from this place into the world to be salt and light and strengthen the bond of one that makes us all one in you. Dios de nuestras jornadas, Dios que preparas camino en el desierto, Tú has prometido estar con nosotros cada día de nuestra vida hasta el fin. Dios, y hemos querido ser obedientes, como dice tu palabra, y hemos estado quietos en esta experiencia de adoración para reconocer, oh Dios, tu señorío en nuestra vida. Pero ahora, al continuar esta jornada, permite que sea una de nuevo descubrir y nueva experiencia. El profeta Jeremías nos reta a que clamemos a ti y tú responderás y mostrarás cosas grandes y ocultas que no conocíamos. Que así sea, Señor, pues tu nombre invocamos. Envíanos ahora desde este lugar para que en el mundo seamos sal y luz. Fortalece el vínculo de tu amor que nos hace uno. Pues lo pedimos en el nombre de Jesús. Amén. 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 God bless the church. <laughs>